You mentioned a little bit about newborn screening, and I think we can shift our focus to talk a little bit about that and why it's so important and what it means to us. Newborn screening has begun in some states, and this means screening babies who are born in a particular state at birth to determine whether they have SMA. Julia, I'd like to ask you your experience with this, um, if your state participates in newborn screening, and can you share with us the potential value that this might bring screening babies for SMA? Sure. We are very lucky in Colorado that we screen all of the babies for Colorado and Wyoming, and our state started screening as of January this year. We've already actually had five uh, babies that have been identified. I think that newborn screening is extremely important. As of last month, 23 out of our uh, 52 states actually have pilot or implemented newborn screening programs already in place. And uh, this is something that many providers don't really understand much about or know much about, but uh, every state has an individual process or program for setting up newborn screening. And although the recommended uniform screening panel um, added SMA as a disorder uh, to be screened for in the United States, every single state has to fund and develop and implement their own program uh, to be able to, to have this process in place. In Colorado and Wyoming, all of our test results uh, come into a single laboratory and a single provider. And that certainly is different from other states uh, that have higher populations. For instance, in Colorado, we have about 60 to 70,000 births a year. A state like Texas would have 400,000 births. And so figuring out a system for each state to manage the positive screens, I think, is important. The newborn screen is just a blood spot. It's done and added to the regular newborn screening that is done on, on every baby at the very beginning. Um, as Nancy said, uh, it is extremely important to be able to identify these patients early on. Uh, the severe infantile form uh, typically would present under six months of age, but some of the more mild phenotypes um, like the type twos or the, the sitters or ambulatory patients might not be identified until they're three or four years of age or even older. And we know that motor neurons are being lost during this period of time. As we're going to be speaking about uh, a little bit uh, later, uh, we now fortunately have multiple uh, treatments that are very successful for SMA. So we know that the earlier we treat the babies, the better the outcomes are. And we'll be seeing that in the results of almost every clinical trial that has been done. So early identification is extremely important. We also each need to work on a system of um, anticipating when we have a positive newborn screen, how we are going to act on that positive screen and having a system in place that once the baby is identified to a primary care provider, that we are able to act very quickly to implement treatment for those babies. And uh, I think that in general, we're looking at being able to identify and treat babies uh, within about 21 days. So things need to work very quickly and efficiently to be able to affect change for these babies. Um, Crystal, um, one of the um, things that I'm um, thinking that you or um, the others could comment on is uh, the important um, continuing role for clinicians. We were talking, John and I, about the phenotype in the presentation, but newborn screening is, like the genetic testing for spinal muscular atrophy, very accurate in the greater scheme of things. It detects 95 to 98% of all um, infants, but there are still some, uh, because it depends on the actual absence of um, SMN1 gene, um, both copies, rather than just dysfunction, people who have a compound heterozygote state, and therefore one missing and one non-functioning SMN1 gene, can still have spinal muscular atrophy. So there is a role for clinicians still to be very, very vigilant, and if they suspect that um, a patient that they're seeing might have any form of spinal muscular atrophy from the infantile through the milder forms, um, they sh even if there has been negative or normal newborn screening, it's really important that the clinician proceed very quickly uh, to do additional testing. 
I think that's a really important point to be made. And um, in the cases where states have not yet implemented newborn screening, it is still important for us to keep in mind as we move forward that for these children who present to their pediatrician with failure to meet motor milestones, particularly if they are meeting their um, cognitive and social milestones, um, and that those are in, in contrast to their physical capacity, it's really important for those children to be referred to a neurologist for further evaluation. And I know that we all have talked extensively about the consideration of this diagnosis as a neurologic emergency. Uh, we'll talk more a little bit about therapy in a while, but we know that the sooner we intervene, uh, potentially the better outcome and so it is critical to be able to identify children who are symptomatic and uh, get them to be seen in a clinic on an urgent basis. And this is the rationale obviously behind initiating newborn screening.